I'm from the west side of Chicago. Mm-hmm. My family, that's, I mean, without saying a lot, you know, that's where mm -hmm. we come from. Some Somewhere growing up in the city, you got a cousin, uncle, or something, yeah. you know, aunt, yeah. anybody, you know, that's from that. And both sides of my family is both sides. from that, yeah, so yeah. it's in my DNA, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. you know. It seems like you've always been able to garner a certain level of respect mm -hmm. just in whatever camp you were in, yeah. wherever you went. Where does that come from? Um, just like being new to a camp, it's not the loudest person. It's the quietest person you gotta, you know, and I always learn just to observe everything. Like yeah. I come in quiet. That's the first thing, like the first few months, people are like, man, you know, he's very quiet. And, they actually don't have a clue. Like, mm -hmm. I'm just observing, like, okay, okay, this person is this person. This, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. it's not overstepping, getting too familiar too fast. Yeah. You know, you grow. That people, you adjust to people and let them adjust to you. You know what I'm saying? You don't just come in, oh, this is me. Yeah. No. Nah. Yeah. What a respect that. And I always learn. My uncles taught me this. The um, element of surprise is the best. Yeah. And I just took that. You can use that with any situation in life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But not to be super spiritual, but the Bible says don't let your left hand know what your right hand do. Yeah. So. It's, um, John P. Key, how that happened? I didn't meet him, but he heard about me. Mm -hmm. Maybe when I was, maybe two years prior to me even getting with him. Okay. Cause you know how, how you Chicago is. You playing for everybody. You doing the community quiet thing, and you just really it, at that time we wasn't trying to get our name. Out. We just wanted to play. Like right. you know, it was just the love of playing. And, right. Uh, so he, we playing for a community choir. So I think we was on a show with them before, and I left. Like I, I was in doing my thing. I was in the street and right. playing bass. So I was, I'm gonna go do this, and I'm out. Right. So I would see them, you know, I would see them, they come to Chicago. John P. Key always had a great show. Absolutely. I, mean, I always just, if I catch it, I would, you know, great show. Never thought, and rest in peace to um, Tony Sheldon. Yeah. It was Pops. He did all the backline for a lot of concerts. So we used to work with me, Ethan Farmer. Yeah. Uh, Cedric Crowd, uh, his son, Tony, like, all us, we used to work the backline, which, Kind of gave us an insight to, so we did a John P. Key show, and you know it, it just never done. You know at the time, like okay, it's John P. Key, cool. So uh, Maurice Fitzgerald, you, of course, everybody know he's a bass player for John at mm -hmm. the time. So I was doing Marvin Sapp, so we was kind of. He, Reese said he was gonna call me for John, but he never called me for right. it, so which was fine. Mm -hmm. So Kevin Randolph, yeah. Calvin called yeah. me for that. Calvin Rogers, they called me in. Out the blue, it was like, "Can you can you come down?" Okay. So I meet John. John was like, "Man, I've been looking for you for the last two years. Really? I've been asking about you. Know everybody out like they couldn't get <laughs> in contact with you or nothing." That's the intro of my record. Oh, you know wow. what I'm saying? Dope. So he tell that story, but. They, um, it was actually through Calvin and um, Kevin Randolph. What's it like being on that bus, man? Man, what? <laughs> man, we, we went on tour, my first tour with him that year. We go through the desert. <laughs> no air. <laughs> what? The air went out. No. It's 8, 9 o'clock in the morning. So you know, it's 12, noon, 1 o'clock come. Oh, my God. It's gonna, man, everybody on there with tank tops on. <laughs> <laughs> just burning up the, the windows open but I mean the gig mm -hmm. that night oh I'm sure so it was crazy had to be man we was on that bus like this but that's the stuff you can't pay for like yeah, the, that's yeah. what tour is about yeah. then the bus would break down <laughs> and then you trying to sleep at night it's loud Sanford and I didn't watch Sanford and Son for years I kept hearing it in my sleep <laughs> It was just on repeat, but John, he was so, he's so musical, but in your sleep, it was still, you know what I'm saying, you still, it's, it's really a lesson. Mm-hmm. Man. Dude, that bus. 
the R. Kelly gig. When he come up with stuff, like, Rob, he trust you enough to... He, like, he used to act, okay, you hear something on this? Like, he'll have, he'll start, like, say, the keyboard, you got all the keyboard players. Then it was, like, three keyboard players, drums, bass, guitar. You know how right. it's lined up. Yeah, Same yeah. way. Yeah. He might start down there, then go to the next person. So by the time he get to you, I'm already vibing. Oh, yeah, I, I like that. And only, only trick about that was I came up with something, and they made a song and recorded, and I didn't get no credit for it. What so. you come, do you remember what, what it was? What would you do? Dun, 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 dun. That was a breakdown that I came up with, the line, and he took it and recorded it. Rodney called me and was like, man, you know, <laughs> Robin put this song out that you did. I was like, what? Yeah, I was like, what can you do? But I just learned, you know, it's music, you know, you just you just gotta do you and pray for the best and you know, expect the worst. Yeah. That's my whole mentality, cause I ain't gonna let nothing that's that can't change me and I ain't coming up with nothing else. Now I'm I'm hurting myself. Yeah. Now my creative ear is gonna close. Very true. So it's like, nah, nah, just keep going, like whatever. But it teach you with that person. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't take this out on the next person. They didn't do this. Yeah. October 2006. My brother, like this, like my brother. I don't care what nobody said about him, Lonnie Burrell. That's mm -hmm. like my brother. I tell the world. But we, man, Lonnie was crip walking with John P. Key <laughs> before we knew what. He just liked this crazy dance, but it was actually crip walking. Mm -hmm. Lonnie. But Lonnie was on, we go back from 18. Oh, wow. So Lonnie is with Jamie Foxx now. Oh, wow. Lonnie had been telling me, bro, I'm going to get you on the Fox gig one day. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. Never, you know, if it happened, cool, if it don't, yeah. I'm doing Puff. So Puff finna slow down. Right. Lonnie said, hey, bro, Fox is just finna change the band. I'll put your name in. Like, they going to call you. I'm like, all right. Lonnie told us about you, da, da, da. We want you to, um, you know, where you located in Chicago because we're going to fly you in. This is to the, we're doing the American Music Awards. and. Oh, wow. I'm like, oh, this is real. Right. You know, once the management call right. you, it's like, oh, okay. So it was supposed to be me and Kevin Randolph. Mm -hmm. Now it's Kevin Randolph. All right, Kevin, yeah. yeah. But Kevin is in, they say we need a, a piano player to MD it. Mm -hmm. You know, Kevin, they thought about they said Kevin Randolph, but Kevin Randolph was in Vegas doing Tony Braxton. Right, okay. So he couldn't do it. Right. So he asked me. Uh, who do you want to get? Ronnie, like, man, we need a keyboard player. Like, who you want to get? They don't want to be nobody from L.A. Right. For whatever reason. But Bennett, pay single, was still playing with us. Mm -hmm. But they needed somebody else. Because I'm like, well, Bennett could have did it. But Bennett, I don't think Bennett wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. So I threw Rodney East's name. Mm -hmm. They was like, who is that? Uh -huh. I said, well, Rodney, Rodney, I think he'd be cool for it because, you know, he... Play R. Kelly with me. Hey, he tour and all. I said, yeah, he did R. Kelly with me. You know what I'm saying? I said, I, I think he'll be perfect for it. Yeah. They called Rodney. I talk, I called Rodney. He's like, yo. Uh, asked him, did he want to do it first? He's like, yeah. I said, well, they're going to call you. I just got off the phone with them. They're going to call you. Because mm -hmm. Rodney didn't know who these people was. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, Lonnie, that's my boy, da, 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 da. And went from there. Man, Puff wants y'all to do Jay Z. We working on American Gangster album. Puff producing it. Mm. I was like, Jay Z. I was like, man, you kill. He said, Puff want 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 y'all to do it. Wow. So that ended up happening. Wow. So but Nissan couldn't. Nissan got the rehearsals going because mm -hmm. they had whatever happened in L.A. I mean, what happened happened in New York and then work. So Puff put us in. The, Nah, I use my band. I'm not, you know. Yeah. Man. <laughs> and the rest is history. We got we got there and Nissan couldn't um because he had to go back out with 50. Mm -hmm. So I was the MD for Jay. Really? Yeah, I was the MD for Jay wow. for the for a while. Then after that, something happened. Oh, Spanky left. Mm -hmm. That's how Tony Royster got there. Mm -hmm. June left, and Shedrick Mitchell 
filled in for a while because he's on the VH1 joint with us. Okay. Then after Shadrick, um, Omar, that's when Omar came back. And we did the married tour, and nice. Omar was the MD. Mm -hmm. So Wow. So you were the MD. Mm -hmm. And then when Omar would leave, uh -huh. I was the MD. Yo, what was that like? But Jay, it yes. was cool. Jay was cool. So it was, you know, you just making sure everybody good. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just because we did a, uh, the American Gangster tour. I, I, I MD that whole thing. Wow. Just making sure everybody good. And and Jay, Jay made it easy for me. You Dang. know what I'm saying? He made it easy for me. Nice. I made sure he was straight and it was cool. So I, I kind of built my own relationship with him. Very nice. Yeah. Man, that's, a, that's pretty incredible. <laughs> Kendrick was a new artist, right? So the MD at the time, my uh, like my like little cousin, like Javad named Javad Day. I don't know if you know Javad. Javad crazy on really? keys. Okay. And the MD called him and asked him uh, at the time. He was like, um, "Can you um, you think I would do it?" Javad mm -hmm. was like, "Yeah, just call him." So he gave me his like, "Man, he gonna call you to do the um, Kendrick gig." I said, I, I was familiar with Kendrick because he was a new artist. I'm like, oh, yeah, I hear songs on the radio. Yeah. I'm like, cool. Most people are like, I don't play for new artists. I play for whoever. Like, right. Especially if I like them. And when he called me, he's like, you know, can you do it? You know, it's this, this. And, you know, we just really getting started. I know how it go. I was right. like, you know what? I ain't doing nothing. Cool. I got it. I got you. And I've been there ever since. And I met him. And my boy, uh, Terrace Martin, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's my dog. Yeah, like, yeah. people don't know our history. Like, we go back. It's like that gangster thing. Yeah, it's like, yeah. met Terrace back when I first coming to L.A., 18. Terrace, like, you was the first, I was the first one. Like, I had my hat backwards mm -hmm. and, you know, just, he said, you brought that whole gangster mentality. Like, people weren't doing it with braids and all. They weren't doing that. And I say, well, I'm just being me. Yeah, I wasn't being, trying right. to start no trend right. and... I was an Allen Iverson fan, so mm -hmm. I just love AI, like how small he was and mm -hmm. the impact he made. Like I love AI. Yeah. So I just that was just me. He's like he talked about that all the time. So when Terrace was producing the records, he was like when he saw me in the rehearsal, he told Kendrick like, "Yo, yo, this this is it." Like, and I've been there six years. That's you know what I'm saying? Love, Music director. Man. Cause when I came in, you know. I'm like, man, the music needs to go back. Like, his music is so dope. Mm -hmm. I mean, we need to play the music. Then they started letting me add stuff, and I came in a dope. But I wasn't trying to overstep. I just wanted to make it sound. Oh, this is the piece of man. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, you outside? All right. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Thundercat. Cause Steve, Steven Bruno yeah. is a monster. Yeah. Always, man. And we real good friends. Oh, cool. So we did, um, what show we did? A Col the Colbert show. Oh, he played. Was... We did double bass on there. Really? How was that? And it was good. Because it was, see, when you got mutual respect, it's no, I'm looking at him funny, he looking at me like, right. boy. We finna tear this down, bro. What you talking about? Mm -hmm. Let's go. And because he's doing one chord stuff, I'm mm -hmm. playing the, the yeah, baseball. Bass, yeah. So it ain't, I know that's what he do. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to take his spot and I already had put it together. He came in and learned what we did. How oh, were we doing? Yeah. He fall right in. He didn't, see, it's no egos when it's peers. You know, ain't nobody yeah. got no ego. Like, we all here to do one job. So we sad. made our statement and moved on. Yeah. I love when the homies check in, and this, man, I'm in town, whether I'm here or not. That's respect. Because if something happened, I've been in situations, niggas come here, and something happened in the street-wise. Now you're trying to call me, but you never checked in. Mm -hmm. you, didn't, you didn't tell me you was in the city. I didn't know you were standing over there. Mm -hmm. Now you want, oh, you having a problem. Now you want to, oh, now you need me. Well, bro, I don't, I'm not in town. So, right. Man, can you got anybody you can send? 
Nah, bro. Mm-mm. You should have called me. Yeah. Check in. At any city I go to, I'm going to hit somebody. Yeah. Just out of respect. Out of respect. I'm in your bro. city, bro. I don't know if you home, but just so you know, I'm here. I'm staying here. You might tell me, hey, be careful over here. This, this, and this going on. But you got to check in. I know a few of the guys came here and they want to play basketball. Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, cool. Let's go. And they got to the gym, and I had a gym full of unusual people they weren't used to seeing, probably about 30. Mm-hmm. And they walked in and was like, man, where you got me at? I'm like, man, y'all say y'all want to, we good. And right. all my guys that came, all these my people, bro, showed them love. Yeah. So they like, man, who are you? I said, I'm just me. Be who you are, bro. People draw to realness, you know what I'm saying? It's the truth. And, and like I say, now, if I'm not here, you know my homies, you know what I'm saying? Now, they're going to look out for you, you know what I'm saying? So that's what it's about. If you in my city and you my boy, I'm responsible for you. That's how I look at it. If something happened to you, that's on me. That's on me. That's real. My, my guy from forever. Oh, for sure.